What's up, YouTube? Have you ever wanted to use the stock sounds that come inside of Logic Pro as instruments inside the MPC software? Well, in this tutorial, I'll show you how. As you probably already know, you can use the MPC software as a plugin or a virtual instrument inside of Logic Pro. All you have to do is set up a software instrument track and then instantiate the MPC software as an instrument on that track. In which case, Logic would be the master time control and basically the master sequencer. On one track in Logic, you would have your MPC software, which you could then open up and sequence inside that MPC software, but it would be slaving to Logic's tempo. If you wanted to use any of Logic's instruments in that example, then you'd have to create additional software instrument tracks and instantiate Logic's instruments on those tracks and then record your MIDI, not inside the MPC software, but on the tracks inside of Logic. You can't sequence those instruments inside the MPC software. And that's a great workflow. I use it all the time. But what I want to show you resembles what my early music production studio looked like, where my MPC 2000 XL was at the heart of that studio. And the reason being is because I had a lot of other keyboards and workstations that had sequencers in them, um, but I just love the MPC sequencer. And so I would sequence everything inside the MPC and then send the MIDI out from this device to communicate with all of my external gear, hardware synthesizers, drum machines, samplers that I had. Similar to, not similar to, but exactly like this Yamaha Motif Rack ES. This is basically a Yamaha keyboard in a rack mount version. I had the uh, Yamaha Motif, um, also a JV1080 made by Roland. I had a Korg Triton, Triton, not in a rack, but in an actual keyboard, um, my ASR10, a couple other drum machines, Emu Proteus, a whole bunch of different sound generating devices in my studio that were pieces of hardware. And so the MPC was where I would put all of my MIDI information to go out to those devices and I would program it to send MIDI to all of those devices to create sound. Of course, then I would have to connect the audio outputs from all of those devices back to uh, a mixing console so that I could hear it through headphones or in the speaker in my studio. You can actually still do that exact same workflow if you have hardware like that with any standalone MPC and any MPC controller that has a MIDI output like, like the Renaissance, and it can still control all of those external devices. But what I want to show you is basically the virtual version of that exact same setup where we sequence in the MPC software, but we use logic like a sound module. So let's jump into the computer and see how this goes. First, as you can see, I have the MPC software open and I also have logic open. So I have the MPC software running in standalone software mode and before I start setting up either the MPC software or Logic, I need to make those two softwares communicate. So I'm going to go into my audio MIDI setup um, and I can find that here. And from my audio MIDI setup, I'm going to go under window and then go to show MIDI studio. Audio MIDI setup is a software that's installed on OS X. It's part of the operating system on all Apple computers. And this software shows you all of the connected audio interfaces and all of the connected MIDI devices. So this is the audio devices window and any audio device that I've had connected to this computer shows here. And this is the MIDI studio window and it shows every single MIDI device that I've had connected to this computer. So you can see um, my MPC one, you can see my MPC Live, my MPC X, my Complete Control, my uh, MPK25, uh, and my MPC Live. 
Now, what's important here is that we need to activate this IAC driver. This is the driver that will allow MIDI to communicate between two different applications on your computer. So I'm going to double click this and open up the IAC driver properties. And then from here, I just want to make sure that the device is online. When I put a check mark in here, you'll see that color lights up here on the IAC driver. And now I know it's online. Now, if you like, you can change the name of the device, the IAC driver name and call it NPC or whatever. That will just allow it to show up in your softwares by that name. But I know to look for the IAC driver because that's the name that's labeled on it. And I'm just going to leave it like that for right now. There's nothing to apply. You just check that and then you can close this out and you can actually quit audio MIDI setup. Since the MPC is the master, I'm going to start in the MPC and I'm going to set up three tracks. I'm going to keep this pretty simple. Uh, the three tracks I'm going to set up, I'm going to start with the first track and I'm going to name the first track drums. And from the drum track, I don't want it to be a drum program. However, I also don't want a key group. I don't want to plug in. I don't want a clip and I don't want CV. I want a MIDI track. So I'm going to create a MIDI track. Now, before I go any further, I need to go into my preferences because what I need to do is tell this MIDI track to communicate with that IAC driver that I just activated. So I'm going to go into my preferences, command comma. And from here, I am going to go under MIDI and under MIDI mapping, MIDI out port A, I'm going to click in here and I can see my IAC driver bus one is available to me. So I'm going to select that and say, okay. And now here in the inspector, I can see that the port for port A is the IAC bus driver. And I can click this drop down menu and I'll see all my ports and I haven't assigned anything to this one, but because I assigned the IAC driver to port A, I can select it there. And I'm going to leave this one on MIDI channel one. Now I'm going to create a second track. And on the second track, I am going to make sure it's a MIDI track which it is because it's just going based on the last track created. And it's also on IAC bus one. And here I'm going to change it to channel two. Now I can also do this from the MPC hardware. So if I select my track here, I can just go to the next track, track three. And here um, I'm just going to change it to MIDI channel three. Uh, let's go ahead and name these tracks too. So, um, Let's go back to track two and I'm going to name this one. Oops. Go back here. I'm going to name this one strings. That's easy. And say do it. And then this one, I'm just going to name, uh, oops. I'm going to name this one strings also, but a different type of string, string, string ensemble. Okay. So I have my tracks created and named in the MPC software and the MPC software is pretty much ready to go. Now I'm going to switch over to Logic. And in Logic, I am going to set up three tracks. I'm just going to set this to empty channel strip. I'm going to do three software instrument tracks for the three here and say create. It gives me three empty software instrument tracks. Now before I put my instruments on this track, I need to set up Logic so that it, when it receives the MIDI coming in, it sees the different MIDI channel and it sends those different MIDI channels to different tracks. By default, Logic just sums all of that MIDI coming in and it sends it to all of the tracks. So what I'm going to do is go into my project settings and that's option P. And under project settings, I'm going to go under the record tab. And here under MIDI, I want to put a check where it says auto demix by channel if multi-track recording. So we're going to be multi-tracking MIDI. I'm going to put a check in there and close this out. Now on my tracks, I'm going to start with the top track. And from the MPC software, the first track I have set up to be drums. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to create some drums. I have my library open. The shortcut to open your library is Y. And under the library, I'm going to go to the electronic drum kit. I'm going to choose the drum machine designer. 
And I'm going to choose, uh, I think I'm going to choose depth charge. Okay. And on the depth charge track, I want it to receive MIDI channel one. So in the inspector, which is here, uh, the shortcut for the inspector is the letter I. So if I hit the letter I, it'll toggle my inspector on and off. From the inspector, you have the region inspector, which is up here at the top. And then we have the track inspector right here with this disclosure triangle. And here is where it tells this particular track which MIDI channels to listen to. Remember I said by default, the tracks listen to all the MIDI channels. Well, I now want to tell this track to only listen to MIDI channel one. And then I'm going to go to the second track and do the same thing. This one I'm going to use an arpeggiated uh, track and I'm going to say acoustic. And I'm going to use this. All right. And I'm going to do the same thing here. Actually, it already defaulted to MIDI channel two for me. But if not, you need to go in here and make sure it's on the second MIDI channel. And then I'm going to go to my third track. And on my third track, I'm going to go back to the arpeggiator group again in my library under acoustic. And I think I want these dynamic strings. Yes, the dynamic string ensemble. And I'm going to set this one to MIDI channel three. So now I have three different tracks in here. This one is listening to MIDI channel one. This one is listening to MIDI channel two. And this one is listening to MIDI channel three. And what I want to do is arm all three of these tracks. And with those three tracks armed, I'm going to check to see if they are receiving MIDI from the MPC. So here on the MPC, I'm on the drums track. And because um, where the sounds are in this particular drum patch that I have set up, I'm going to need to toggle into bank C to actually trigger this sound. So there's my kick. So it's sending MIDI over there and it's playing the drum sounds from this Def Charge instrument that's in Logic. If I open it up, you can see the actual GUI for that particular software instrument. And you can see when I play the MPC, it's controlling those sounds. I'm going to close that out. Now let's go to track two. And on track two, we should be getting these strings. And I have an arpeggiated synth or an arpeggiated string sound here. And that's, that's what you're hearing. And then if I go to track three, I should have some other strings. Cool. So we're almost set up to get ready to start recording MIDI. So we're going to go back over into the MPC software. And in the MPC software, I need to set up my sequence. I got my track set up, but I want to set up my sequence with the right tempo and the right amount of bars. In this case, I want my tempo to be 88 beats per minute. So I can change that right here in the software. I'm gonna type in 88 beats per minute. And from the hardware, I'm gonna set the amount of bars to four bars, okay? And then I'm gonna start on the second track. And for this, just to make this real simple, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna go in here and use the pad perform um, it's set to progressions, uh, C sharp, natural minor, and I am going to put this on the second octave. And in pad perform, each pad plays a chord. All I have to do is hold one pad down and it'll play a chord. So because these are arpeggiated, those chords are broken into parts and I get this really cool rhythmic uh, string part. Mm -hmm. 